Stoke Space is planning to launch its fully reusable Nova vehicle starting next year, but it won't be fully reusable, not yet. It'll be completely expendable, in fact, when it starts launching. If it is successful, there is definitely a market demand for Nova, but it all depends on whether or not Stoke can deliver on what it promises. A year ago, Stoke Space was given permission to launch from Cape Canaveral LC-14, and ever since then, it's been going under an environmental impact statement study. And that EIS has been pretty quiet in the background, but a TechCrunch article came out today that went into some of the details about what we are learning about Stoke as it goes through the EIS process. I will link the article down below. The EIS document is almost 700 pages long, so I'll be honest, I didn't read it, but I did read the summary. Most of it's pretty standard. There's no huge surprises in there, but one thing that did surprise me, and maybe it shouldn't have, is that Stoke Space is not actually developing a reusable rocket at this time. I mean, they say they are, and they say that they have that end state in mind as they are designing, which is you know, very intelligent of them, that is smart to know that they want to make it reusable. But at the same time, they are developing a completely expendable Nova, which they plan to launch starting next year from LC14. Do y'all prefer LC or Slick? Like I, I kind of prefer Slick. I don't know. Launch complex, space launch complex. I digress. Stoke Space is still a fairly new startup. It's still within that realm of development that it's not taking terribly long to get Nova on board. It's pretty reasonable for them to start launching next year, assuming that the launch pad is ready, the EIS is ready, and assuming that Nova is ready. And they have been doing some pretty cool engine tests. They seem to be ramping up, but it does take all the things working together properly in order to conduct a successful launch. Stoke Space actually announced Nova last year, and they have had so much hype in the space community. I, I don't know if you feel that way, but I definitely feel like every time I hear about Stoke, it is hyped up. And it's the analyst in me that takes a step back. Is Stoke really going to you know, revolutionize the space industry or really add something significant? And it could. A completely reasonable rocket. There's no other rocket that's being developed right now that's completely reusable except for SpaceX Starship, which of course is another plane of existence. It, it is a huge heavy lift vehicle, whereas Nova is a medium-sized vehicle. And if Stoke can get Nova on board, launching regularly as a completely reusable vehicle in the medium launch class, then it really does have a lot over its competitors in terms of cost savings and presumably cadence as well, being able to really launch very quickly, just as SpaceX does right now with its Falcon 9. And and of course, if you look at the history of reusable rocketry, at least in the recent history, SpaceX is one example where they didn't start out with Falcon being reusable. They started out with, the, with it being expendable. And as they demonstrated that Falcon 9 could actually launch and get payloads to orbit, then they really focused on reusability. And that is what Stoke is doing. Stoke is really focusing on getting payloads to orbit first and foremost, and then they're going to switch over to reusability, which is a smart thing to do. But it's the promises that always make me take a step back. Because when it comes to space startups, especially launch companies, they make a lot of promises and usually fail to deliver, <laughs> and, or at least fail to deliver on any kind of time frame that they put out there initially. According to the EIS, Stoke Space hopes to launch twice next year from Slick 14, and then ramp up to 10 times per year from that site. They also have a test facility in Washington State, not far from where they're based outside of Seattle. And this is where it gets interesting because if it can demonstrate next year that it can get Nova launch and if they can even get that to orbit, if they can get that rocket to orbit, that would be a tremendous success and that will allow them to switch gears and really focus on that reusability aspect. If, like most launchers, they fail to get Nova launched in the first or even the second time they try, then it's probably going to be a little while, if ever, that they can get off the ground. At this point, it's too soon to say. They seem to have a great team. They seem to have really great hardware that they've been putting out already. They have some initial financing, so they do have things going for them. It's when the rubber meets the road and things start happening, whether or not they succeed or fail. For example, recently I did a video on Astra, which I will link above, as to why I was skeptical about Astra years ago. It, it's still in that gray area of it could fail, it could come back, and Stoke isn't in that gray area yet. Stoke is still ramping up. So what have they been doing? Well, they have already built and demonstrated a second stage ring. I find it interesting they started with the second stage actually. So they've been doing a test fires with that engine ring already since I think 2022. They have at least two prototypes of their second stage, Hopper 1 and Hopper 2, which they have been testing. 
as of April this year, they completed the full installation of their first stage and they've been doing test firings. In June, they had a successful test firing of their full flow stage combustion engine. So all of that is pointing in a positive direction that Stoke will be ready to launch next year. It all depends on how those first test launches do. But let's take the scenario that they are very successful next year and they happen to get to orbit next year. Right now, there is a launch shortage and they are perfectly poised to take advantage of it. I love that they've started with a medium lift rocket. If you've been following the industry at all for the past like decade or so, you will know that there was a trend towards smaller launch vehicles, small sat launchers in particular. And there was a lot of skepticism that there would be a long-term market for multiple smaller launch vehicles. And we have seen that shift. We've seen a trend now away from the really tiny small sats, cube sats, like you know, one U, three U, cube sats. We've seen a shift now to larger satellites, not, not huge satellites, but slightly larger satellites and larger launch vehicles. The medium launcher size is the sweet spot right now. And there's flexibility in that as well. There's flexibility of doing ride share with small payloads in addition to launching a medium sized payload. And as we've seen with other companies such as Rocket Lab, they could always scale up once they have a successful Nova. If they wanted to, they could build upon that and create a larger vehicle. Once they get to that point, if they get to that point of fully reusable Novas, then they really could have a very quick cadence. As we've seen with SpaceX and to some degree, some other launch companies such as Blue Origin. I mean, Blue Origin, they were the first to launch a rocket to suborbital space and have it come back down and land successfully. Blue Origin succeeded with that just a few months before SpaceX did. And Stoke Space employees, at least the, the founders, they come from Blue Origin. So they're coming from that background where they have seen the success of reusability, launch, land, repeat. That was the motto back in the day. So if you can get that launch, land, repeat going, especially with a fully reusable rocket, it could really ramp up not to 10 a year, but you know, to 100 or a year or more. Somebody eventually is going to realize the success that SpaceX has had and try to replicate that or overtake that and that could be Stoke Space. So I can see where this hype is coming from, but I think it's premature. Oh, I did mention that there is a launch shortage right now. If you've been following the industry for any real length of time, you have seen this considerable ramp up, especially with satellite constellations, but not only satellite constellations. So there is a significant demand from a diversity of sources, not just government, you know, not just SpaceX, Starlink, not just one source, but a global diversity of government and commercial and to some or lesser degree, university and nonprofit payloads that need to be launched. And with the uh, Western world cutting off Russian launches after the invasion of Ukraine two and a half years ago, and with a lot of the launch vehicles being delayed, a lot of the small sat launchers or medium sized launchers that we expected to come forward much sooner um, just haven't. And so there's a significant bottleneck in launch right now. I should be a Brevard County resident next year by the time they start launching. So I'm excited to see what they doing out of Slick 14. I, for one, am really excited about companies like Stokes Space because I think that they are needed. I think that we need some fresh blood, if that's the way to put it. We need some fresh launchability. And not only that, open up opportunities for additional payloads and additional users. I wish you the best of luck, Stoke.